grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. A very warm welcome to you all from all of us here at St. Mary's Cathedral on this historic occasion. We are delighted to host this signing of the St. Andrew's Declaration, to be joined by representatives of the Church of Scotland and the Scottish Episcopal Church here in the cathedral, both on the podium and in the congregation. We are joined too by representatives of our other partner churches and ecumenical bodies. You are all most welcome. As are those of you joining us online, we hope the live stream enables you to join us in spirit and in prayer as we mark this significant moment in the life of our two denominations and commit ourselves in hope to proclaiming the gospel afresh together. If you are online, you are probably able to avoid the stipulation for all of us here in the building to please, unless you are leading worship, to keep your face mask on and to observe social distancing where possible. Wherever you are joining us from, you are most welcome. The world belongs to God. How good it is. How wonderful. Love and faith come together. If Christ's disciples keep silent, Christ is in us as God is in Christ. Open our lips, O oh God. Let us pray. God, whose will is for all your creatures to live in peace, for all your people to know fullness of life, and for your church to witness through its unity to the love embodied by Jesus Christ, we gather in this place to witness to the faith we all share, to offer our worship, our thanksgiving, and our prayers to you, God, who is creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, three persons in one. We bring before you memories of the past we have inherited, acknowledging the sins and hurts and offenses our forebears in faith have perpetrated against one another, resolving that the past should no longer dictate our future. We bring before you our own experiences of shared worship and mission, of warm friendships, of lively debate, of agreement reached, and disagreements we will not allow to divide us. We bring before you our hopes for deepening relationships, for greater sharing in the joy of worship, for deeper service together to this land, which is our common home, and to the people of it, for a unity to come even greater than that which we celebrate today. Let us in silence confess our failures to live as disciples of Christ. Before, Before God, God, with, with the, the people, people of God, God we, we confess to our brokenness, to the, the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. God 
forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ called Andrew to be his first disciple. Seeing in him gifts of faith, sincerity, integrity, and willingness to serve. May those same gifts be found in each of us and in all the churches represented here today, so that like Andrew, we may keep constant company with our Lord, bring others to Christ, and without thought of reward, serve all people in Christ's name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
reading from the prophet Isaiah. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise.
A reading from Ephesians 4 at verse 1. I therefore beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Sometime after I was nominated as moderator designate of the General Assembly, I received a message from Sandy Horsburgh asking me if I could keep my diary free for the 30th of November in the hope that both the General Assembly and the General Synod of the Scottish Episcopal Church would approve the St. Andrew Declaration for signature on that day. They did, and I am delighted that this momentous occasion 
has now arrived. And many thanks to our Common Calling Working Group for all the endeavors they made to bring us to this moment. The very fact that this day has been chosen underlines our common heritage. Together we celebrate Andrew, who heard Jesus call and immediately left his nets to follow him. And our common heritage is something to be cherished, not only by those of us in these two denominations, but also by all who follow Jesus in other denominations throughout Scotland. He gives us, encourages us to give thanksgiving for the mission to and practice of the faith in our land by Ninian, Columba, Kentigan, and our churches continue to find inspiration in contemplating the life of Queen Margaret and her works of charity motiv motivated by her faith in Jesus. But the declaration doesn't sweep under the carpet the tragic and often violent history of the relations between the Presbyterian and Episcopalian traditions in Scotland. Rather, it narrates our Common Calling Working Group, acknowledged our shared history and have named past conflicts, divisions and hurts. And in so doing, we have learned from one another and have asked forgiveness of each other where we have caused pain by our words and actions. And surely it is by acknowledging these past transgressions and seeking forgiveness that today we move forward that today the Church of Scotland and the Scottish Episcopal Church can and do make the welcome joint declaration to commit ourselves to respond together to our common calling to proclaim the reign of God to all the people of Scotland by strengthening our partnership in ministry and mission. You know, such has been the level of agreement, joint working, understanding over many years, including the mutual welcome according to communicants of both denominations when the Eucharist has been shared, that some might try to downplay the significance of today and say, well, is it really a big deal? Well, emphatically, yes, it is. It remains the case that in spite of reservoirs of goodwill and many good examples of common action and purpose, our churches have never before entered into any formal joint declaration, recognizing that we share the same faith and accordingly are true churches of the gospel. And that we solemnly do today. For today is not only a culmination of the work put in to achieve the declaration, but it must also be a starting point to give impetus to identifying more ways in which we can express our unity. At the core is the recognition that together we share the calling of the church to serve the people of Scotland in mission and ministry. And we're all too familiar with the challenges facing our respective churches and ensuring that that calling is a reality in all parts of Scotland. And at the conference held earlier today, we heard inspiring and encouraging examples of the imaginative ways in both rural Scotland and in urban Scotland as to how people have been coming together to work together and sharing ministries in ways which enrich congregational life. The General Assembly in May also instructed the Faith Nurture Forum when developing principles for presbytery mission planning to include a principle of ecumenical working. And our hope and prayer must be that the signing of this declaration will provide fresh enthusiasm for discovering new ways of working together and a stimulus for presbyteries and dioceses to look outward to identify working examples of good practice. I think it's also the case that we, face, that we are familiar with the challenges facing our land of Scotland and indeed the wider world. And in the declaration, we are called to work together in practical and prophetic ways on the social, political and ethical issues arising from our shared participation in public life. I somewhat think that shared participation in public life took on a new dimension when Bishop Mark and I stood in the pouring rain in Glasgow at the, uh, at the Climate Justice March. But our cooperation, that along with leaders in other denominations and other faith leaders, I hope sent out a powerful message of unity in the face of a very compelling international issue. And of course, there are so many others of which it is important that we share, uh, that, that, that we work together in in, uh, from our shared participation in the public life of this land. 
It's also important to note that this declaration does not seek to fudge, nor to deny that differences between us exist. There is still work to do. But in looking forward to a time when a fuller unity may be realized, a framework is established where discussions to address outstanding issues can be undertaken in a spirit of partnership and friendship. And in all this, all the work that has been done and the fruits of that work, it must also be our hope and prayer that we can provide a template for similar discussions to take place with other churches. As we heard the words of St. Paul in his letter to the church in Ephesus, may we take to heart today that message in Scotland. I therefore beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I want to say worry not. I'm not going to repeat all that except to say amen. Um, but those of you who know me know I can never hesitate to have a little conversation as well. Um, I promise to those of you who have listened to me speak about declarations over the last six, seven years, this will be my last conversation between us about the relations of family and best friends. I have to confess that I have become increasingly excited about the possibilities that this moment can bring us. I know there'll be those who are anxious, those who think we need to go further and faster, and those who wonder what all the fuss is about. For me, this is a moment on a journey I seem to have been on all my life. A journey that has turned from defending my position to one of sharing expectations. I find it difficult to imagine a world where I might exclude myself from school worship because I was a pisky. Yet, that one used to work. Neither can I imagine a moment when I would turn someone away from the altar because I somehow believed they didn't belong. These changes, when you look back over my life, has been dramatic. Distant cousins have become close relatives, and interesting strangers have become firm friends. All because we have the courage to live out the call that all should be one. I know that I'll probably always find my liturgical refreshment at a wonderful sung High Eucharist, but I know I will also find my spiritual challenge and a remarkably warm welcome in the parish churches that so often invite me to speak. I worship alongside people of all denominations. I'm asked what we think about changes in other denominations. They ask us the questions about what they are doing. And when we fill a place with worship, I'm also filled with hope and joy. So today, we celebrate what has been achieved, open and welcoming to each other, sharing in worship and mission, praying together. We're also looking to the future as we commit ourselves to continue this work and this journey. Where we will get to, well, let's wait and see. What do I reflect on today? That tonight I stand here surrounded by friends, real friends, united in the life of faith. And that has to be better than in my past, simply nodding a greeting at distant cousins in the church across the street.
we, the Church of Scotland and the Scottish Episcopal Church, in the light of our common calling within the life of the Church of Jesus Christ in Scotland, shaped by our understanding of the mission of God, our agreement in faith, and the opportunities to share in ministry and mission, make the following declaration. of Jesus Christ and truly participating in the apostolic mission of the whole people of God. We acknowledge that our churches share in the common confession of the apostolic faith. We acknowledge that in our churches the word of God is authentically preached and the sacraments of baptism and holy communion are faithfully administered. We acknowledge one another's ordained ministries as possessing not only the inward call of the Spirit, but also Christ's commission through the Church, and as given by God to be instruments of grace for the mission and unity of the Church. We acknowledge that personal, collegial and communal oversight, episcopy, is embodied and exercised in our churches in a variety of forms as a visible sign expressing and serving the church's unity and continuity in apostolic life, ministry, and mission. We acknowledge that our unity is as yet imperfect, and we look forward to the time when the fuller visible unity of our churches may be realized. We commit ourselves to respond together to our common calling, to proclaim the reign of God to all the people of Scotland by strengthening our partnership in ministry and mission. Through this commitment, we hope to enrich our continuing relationships locally, nationally and internationally with the churches of Scotland and throughout the world that we may deepen our individual faith and serve God's whole creation. We will welcome opportunities to draw other churches into the activities and initiatives that we share. As part of that commitment to seek appropriate ways to respond to our common calling within the life of the Church of Jesus Christ, we invite you now to stand so that we can affirm our commitment together. We ask you, the ministers and members of the Church of Scotland and the Scottish Episcopal Church, will you commit your church, congregations and yourselves to pray for and with one another to work towards the fuller sharing of ministry and of spiritual, human, financial, and physical resources. With the help of God, we will. Will you commit your church, congregations, and yourselves to encourage, affirm, and support local expressions of our common calling within the life of the church? as it participates in the mission of God, and to explore opportunities for new partnerships in the communities in which we serve. With the help of God, we will. Will you commit your church, congregations, and yourselves to welcome one another's members to worship and participate in the congregational life of each other's churches? With the help of God, we will. Will you commit your church, congregations, and yourselves to stimulate theological discussion between our churches, including consideration of the outstanding issues, healing, hindering, fuller communion? With the With help, help of God, we will. Will you commit your church, congregations, and yourselves to work together in practical and prophetic ways on the social, political and ethical issues arising from our shared participation in public life. With the 
the health of God, we will. To ensure that these commitments are followed through at every level of our church life, will you commit your church, congregations and yourselves to allocate resources to joint initiatives and to hold one another to account on what we have agreed to do. With the help of God, we will. Will the congregation please be seated? The moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland and the primus of the Scottish Episcopal Church will now sign the St Andrew Declaration.
united in Christ, who gives us the victory. Together we pray to God. the church, the body of Christ, that we might truly live the unity we receive through the Holy Spirit. Together we pray. For the leaders of our churches, that they may be faithful to the unity to which we and all Christians are called. Together we pray. For the nations of the world that they may live in peace with one another and promote justice for all. Together we pray. For all people, that we may be good stewards of creation. Together we pray. For all people in our society, that we may be transformed to live as caring neighbours to one another. Together we pray. For all families and households, that their struggles and their joys may find fulfillment in your love. Together we pray. For the sick and the suffering, that their lives may be transformed by your healing presence. Together we pray. For the dying, that they may be comforted by your presence. Together we pray. Lord, you stand in the midst of us. Help us to know your presence with us always. Grant, Grant us unity and peace in all that we say, in all that we do, and in all that we are. Amen. In the words that Jesus taught us, we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. Save, save us, us from, from the time, time of trial and, and deliver us from evil. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, 
now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope to which we were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. May God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons in one God, inspire you to live as one, that you may be witness to the perfect unity of his love and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The worship is over. The service begins. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in name, the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.